welcome to the Kibana tutorial series. My name is Tim and in this part I want to explain you how aggregations in Kibana work. It's crucial to understand aggregations when using Kibana. They are the basis of all visualizations you will later do in Kibana. So during this video I would like to explain you what different types of aggregations there are, how they work and how they influence visualizations in Kibana. Kibana works on data that you have stored in Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch stores documents. Documents may be events from your log files, maybe tweets you are indexing, or any other form of JSON documents. There are two different types of aggregations. Bucket aggregations and metrics aggregations. Let's have a look at the documents that we have stored in Elasticsearch. Bucket aggregations are responsible for grouping documents in so-called buckets as illustrated here by orange circles. Each bucket can contain several documents or also just a single document. Depending on the concrete type of bucket aggregation, buckets might overlap itself and one document may fall into two or more buckets. Also depending on the type of the bucket aggregation, there can be empty buckets that doesn't contain any documents at all. And as you can see, after the bucket aggregation has created its buckets, there might also be documents that are not part of any bucket. The result of the bucket aggregation are several buckets which can contain several documents. The second type of aggregation are matrix aggregations. The matrix aggregation is now responsible for calculating a value for each bucket based on the documents inside this bucket. But how are these aggregations now linked to visualizations in Kibana? Let's again look at a small example. The bucket aggregation we have chosen has created three buckets. The matrix aggregation has afterwards calculated these values for the buckets 6, 2 and 4. If we now visualize this as a pie chart, each bucket will be one slice of the pie and the size of each slice will be determined by the value of the matrix aggregation. Each bucket slice is as large as the value of this bucket was. In this example, the blue bucket will get 2 of 12 parts of the pie, the cyan one 4 of the 12 parts and the lime bucket the remaining 6 parts. Depending on what visualization you choose, buckets and their values will be represented differently. E.g. in a bar chart, each bucket gets one bar and the height of each bar is determined by the bucket's value. The different types of visualizations will be covered in another part of this tutorial series. Elasticsearch and Zokibana does support several different types of bucket and matrix aggregations. Elasticsearch does support some aggregations that haven't made it into Kibana yet and therefore are not covered in this video or mentioned on this list. Let's first look at all the bucket aggregations and how they group documents together into buckets. Most of the aggregations require a field of the document to work on. Often there are restrictions on the data type of that field. The first bucket aggregation we want to look at is the histogram aggregation. It works on any field that is of type number. Also a lot of the aggregations have several settings that you can adjust. The histogram aggregation has a numeric setting called interval that you can control. The histogram aggregation just groups together documents which had a value within the same interval. E.g. if we specify an interval of 50, you will get a bucket for 0 to 50 containing all the documents that have a value of the aggregated field between 0 and 50. The next bucket contains all documents with a value between 50 and 100, the one after between 100 and 150 and so on. Besides the histogram aggregation, there is also a date histogram aggregation. Again, it requires you to specify an interval. In this case, you tell it to group each milliseconds, each seconds, each minutes and so on together. If you specify an interval of hours, you might get one bucket containing all documents that had a value between 3 pm and 4 pm, one for 4 pm and 5 pm and so on. There's also an auto interval, which will cause Kibana to determine what a good time range would be for each bucket, so that you will get a reasonable amount of buckets as a result. If same size intervals are not flexible enough for you, you can use one of the range aggregations. There is a range aggregation that works on numeric fields, a date range aggregation for date fields and an IP range that work on fields containing IP addresses. As an input to all these aggregations you specify custom ranges. 
You could specify a range from 3 to 14, one from 15 to 91 and one from 653 to 5897. The bucket aggregation will then group all documents with values in these ranges together in their buckets. This is one of the aggregations where a document could be in more than one bucket, in case you specify overlapping ranges. The date and IP range aggregation take ranges of date times and IP addresses but basically work the same. Next is the filter aggregation. This is pretty much how Kibana 3 worked. You specify any amount of custom filters. Each filter is a regular query that you could enter also in the search field in Kibana. The aggregation will now create one bucket for each filter and all the documents matching this filter will be part of that bucket. The geohash aggregation works on fields of type geopoint. It will group all documents that are within a specific area together into one bucket. You can adjust the precision, which will control how large the area of each bucket will be. The terms aggregation works on a lot of different types of fields. It will create a bucket for the terms in that field that appears the most often and will insert all documents that had that term within that field. Since terms are highly depending on the mapping configured in Elasticsearch, it takes a few minutes to explain how terms work and how the terms and significant terms aggregation work. That's why they will get their own part in this tutorial series. Once our bucket aggregation has created several buckets, the matrix aggregation must now calculate a value for each of the buckets. Let's look what kind of different matrix aggregation Kibana supports. Count isn't technically a matrix aggregation, but an information that the bucket aggregation automatically outputs. But it's handled the same way in Kibana as every matrix aggregation. The value of each bucket will just be the count of documents in this bucket. In our example, this is four and three. Except the count aggregation, every matrix aggregation again requires a field to work on. Let's assume we have a field called X in all documents and this will also be the field we let the matrix aggregation run on. A sum aggregation would just sum up all values of all documents inside the bucket, which would result in 10 and 6 in this example. The average matrix aggregation calculates the average of all values, 2.5 and, and 2 in our case. The median aggregation will calculate the median. The min aggregation works also on date fields and it will return the lowest value or the earliest date of any document within that bucket. The max aggregation works also on date fields and does exactly the opposite. It returns the highest value or latest date within the bucket as a value for that bucket. The unique count aggregation outputs the count of distinct values of all documents which is 3 for the left bucket and 3 for the right bucket. Until now every matrix aggregation calculated exactly one value for each bucket. That's why they are so called single value matrix aggregations. The standard deviation aggregation is the first multi value aggregation. It outputs more than one value per bucket. The way this is visualized in Kibana depends on the visualization type, e.g. the bar chart, can split the bar it generates for each bucket according to the multiple values the multi-value aggregation calculated. Not all visualizations therefore can handle multi-value aggregations. The standard deviation calculates the lower and upper bounds of the standard deviation as a result for each bucket. The percentiles aggregation is also multi-value matrix aggregation. You must specify multiple percentages as an input value. It will then find the value for each of the percentages so that that amount of documents within the bucket have a value equal or less to the result. E.g. if you want the 50% percentile, the result will be that value under which 50% of all documents in that bucket are. That's why the 50% percentile is equal to the median. In our example, 95% of the documents in that bucket have a value below 4.55. 100% of documents have a value equal or less than 5. That's why the 100% percentile is equal to the max value, because all documents inside that bucket must have a value below it. 
The percentiles aggregation is useful to EG detect in case of request logs what the response time of most of the users, for example the 95 percentile was. The percentile ranks is basically the reverse of the percentile aggregation. In that case you specify the value and you will get the percentage of how many documents are lying under that value. Let's assume we have response times of our server again. We can specify some values like 200, 1000, 2000 milliseconds and so on. And we will know how many of the requests have passed within that time limit. One small hint to metrics aggregations. Since Elasticsearch is made for huge datasets and distributed nodes, the value it reports might not be 100% equal to what you would get if you calculate the same value with a calculator looking at each document individually. But they come very close to that. Therefore Elasticsearch calculates the result to some degrees faster than you can do it, let's say around 20% faster, or maybe even more. Now we've seen all buckets and metrics aggregations Kibana currently supports. In the next parts we will cover how to use this knowledge inside Kibana to build amazing visualizations and get a deep insight into your data.